Hey friends, welcome back to Hot News. It's Saturday, I think. I don't know when this video is coming out. I'm not a magician. Let's talk about stuff such as Sponsor Spot, our website, UFD Deals. Go check it out if you're trying to save money on tech products. Let's say you're trying to build the next generation computer. You want Ryzen 3000 on it. Well, guess what? You can still buy RAM. Go check out RAM Deals on UFD Deals. Go to UFD.tech to check it out. Link for that is in the video description. And with that being said, let's talk about AMD stuff. We got, a, we got a whole bunch of AMD things, especially CPUs, motherboards, all that kind of good stuff. And there's been more benchmark leaks coming out. This first one that we're going to talk about is of the 3950X having a 5.2 gigahertz benchmark coming in on Geekbench and just absolutely re retorting anything that Intel could have. Just saying, oh, you have a 9980XE that costs $2,000? Toy with you. Toy. Play. I said goodbye. Good day, sir. The, the score coming in at 5.2 gigahertz on all cores is 6,714 on the single core and 64,953 on the multi-core, which is absolutely insane. Now, obviously there's a lot to unpack with this benchmark, such as the fact that we have no idea what the cooling was on this. Was this liquid nitrogen? Was this dry ice? Was this just water cooling? Was this air cooling? We actually don't know. It's more likely than not that this is liquid nitrogen uh, uh, cooled because of the fact that AMD showed like some video at the end of their E3 announcement kind of showing that 5.3 gigahertz was what they were getting on liquid nitrogen. So my guess is we shouldn't necessarily expect 5.2 gigahertz from these Ryzen 3 chips coming out of the box for Main Street consumers, but to see that they're capable of it and they can wreck Intel's top end $2,000 processor if you have a little bit of extra cooling is quite good. Obviously, uh, we'll have to see what the overclocking is once we get the chips in hand, but uh, the 3950X not slated to come out until September. So this one's gonna be baking for a little while and we're just gonna get the 3900X and below on July 7th. Then let's talk about what we want to hear next, which is Zen 3, okay? Everybody's talking about Zen 2, Ryzen 3000. Nobody cares, okay? AMD is already working on Zen 3 and they have informed us that for their 2020 CPUs, which will uh, be on the seven nanometer plus EUV lithography, what we're gonna get is not DDR5 support. So that's the big thing that AMD is coming out and saying, yes, you get PCI Express 4.0, but we're not changing the RAM just yet. 2020, too soon for DDR4 to go away. We just started on DDR4 back in 2015 with Skylake. Why would we change it now, huh? We're, I mean, we've only been three generations of Ryzen processors on DDR4. Everybody keeps their stuff. Okay, everybody keeps DDR4, no need for DDR5. Obviously changing the DDR5 on Zen 3 and releasing that in 2020 would kind of change AMD's promise of supporting the AIM-4 socket on older motherboards for upcoming Ryzen processors because it would just make it so that you could technically use the CPU, but then it would be that weird like DDR2, DDR3 back in the early 2010s era where things were funny that way, so. We'll see where this goes. DDR5 not officially supported in 2020. And then we have a benchmark of the Ryzen 5 3600, which just came out, showing uh, a pretty decent overclock of 4.3 gigahertz and showing that even with uh, just memory speeds of around 3,600 megahertz, it has a latency of only 65 nanoseconds, which is comparable to what Intel has on their i7 processors. So getting some decent speed RAM actually would mean that the Infinity fabric design that Intel or AMD has on the Zen 2 processors has made significant improvements and has come down substantially and might not even be as much of a factor in gaming going forward. So not just uh, the IPC improvements, not just uh, clock speed improvements on Zen 2, but also even latency improvements coming out according to this benchmark right here. And then we also have some postings from ASRock showing what you should expect from memory overclocking on the Ryzen 3000 side showing that DDR4 3200 megahertz is actually going to be expected in a lot of different cases. Most importantly, in a dual rank setup on just two slots if you're using uh, two, two sticks of RAM on your X570 motherboard. But what they are showing is that if you only use single rank slot sticks 
in each of the four slots that you might have on an X570 board, then your base support drops down to 2,667. So if you wanna get the best speed quoted, you should put only two sticks of dual rank in two slots instead of loading the population. But as we've known from other motherboards that are out there, it is definitely possible to get them overclocked. And if your IMC or integrated memory controller on your Ryzen processor is good enough, the recommended specifications will only be a guideline and not what you're actually gonna be potentially potentially able to hit. So it's good guidance, but not necessarily the truth. And then we talked a lot about CPU stuff. Let's talk about GPU stuff because we've got a leaked time spy benchmark of the Radeon RX 5700 XT. And what we see is you get a score of 8,000 575, the graphics score 8,719, which if you compare that to Nvidia stuff, that's basically on par with an RTX 2070 Founders Edition. However, as we're gonna talk about in tomorrow's hot news, those are now obsolete. The RTX 2070 is gonna be replaced by the RTX 2060 Super, and it's gonna come in at a pretty decent price, less than what the 5700 XT is gonna cost, and based on all of the indications that we're seeing, we'll probably be on par with an RTX 2070. So the RTX 2060 Super with eight gigabytes of GDDR6 competing with this $450 product from AMD, uh, also coming in at the $450 price point. It doesn't look like AMD's benchmarks are really that great at this point. They're just basically what you would expect from the current landscape. They're not groundbreaking, they're not bad. It's just, it is what it is. And we'll have to see how they do and whether it be like that, because it really do sometimes. And then we have information on an, a patent that was recently published on June 27th showing AMD's patent filing for ray tracing. It looks like it's gonna be more of a hybrid approach, but they actually do have a patent published on how they're working on getting texture-based ray tracing, and that's kinda cool. So in case you, uh, you wanna know how AMD's gonna do ray tracing, you can understand the technical details, we'll leave a link down below for that patent. And then finally, we talked about in a previous hot news about how Alienware's co-founder was leaving Dell to potentially join AMD. Well, now the latest uh, information coming out is that he is going to be joining AMD as their chief gaming officer. Whatever that means, I guess this is their, uh, this is where they want to put all of their effort, especially after the fact that they've lost so many people to Intel. They were just like, you know what? We don't need to replace these engineers and marketing people. Let's get a chief gaming officer up in here. I like, I like AMD. I like their processors, they're doing really great stuff with Ryzen, but I'm just always so baffled by their GPU department, and this seems to be something that also is just confusing for me. I don't know what their direction is, it does seem like they're lost, uh, and they're just producing something that is barely good enough every time and coming out nearly a year later than whenever Nvidia launches stuff. So. Ah, AMD is confusing me, and especially with Intel coming in next year with their Project Z GPUs and the rumors we've been hearing about those, AMD might not be in a great spot for their GPU department for for much longer. I mean, 50 Navi, this early stuff of Navi is gonna be maybe the last time they're relevant. We'll see where that goes. I think out of everything that's supposed to be launching on July 7th, the thing I'm least excited for is the new motherboards. It actually looks like X470 should do pretty well for any Ryzen 3000 CPUs that you might wanna buy, especially because a lot of them draw less power and require less energy to run properly than they did for the Ryzen 2000 generation because they are stepping down to seven nanometers. So the extra like VRMs and power delivery systems looks like it's only gonna be necessary for the higher end chips such as the 3900 X, but not even then, maybe mostly the 3950X is gonna need the high end X570. And if you're just looking at picking a 3700X or a 3800X up, those can probably just, you could get by on the top end X470 board. So that's, that's my perspective. Anyways, let me know what you thought of the Ryzen 3000 stuff. Let me know what you thought of the Navi stuff. Are you excited? Are you planning on upgrading to, let's say, X570? Are you planning on upgrading to Ryzen 3000 if you have a previous board like the X470? And are you planning on upgrading to Navi? Because it does look like Navi is more of a replacement for Vega than anything else, not necessarily something that you would switch from an RTX card over to Navi. It doesn't have any extra features that you would, it doesn't have higher 
bandwidth memory, it's on GDDR6, and it doesn't have more memory. It's also eight gigs like all of NVIDIA's cards. So I'm kind of confused to see where the value proposition of Navi is, but you guys obviously have your perspectives. Is Navi RX 5700 series something that you're looking at picking up next week? Let me know down in the comments. Also, don't forget to check out our website, UFD Deals, if you're looking to buy stuff on the internet. Check it out, okay? Maybe you need a new sweet monitor, FreeSync monitor for the Navi purchase you're gonna make. Check it out on UFD deals. We have monitor deals. You click the link, we make money, everybody wins. So that's my perspective. Let me know yours, obviously, to get subscribed, hit the like button, do all the things that you do for a channel because they make us happy and they make sure that we have high subscriber numbers, which we can then sell to companies and then make money to continue this operation that we've got going here to bring you daily tech news content because it costs money to pay editors and so I'm done. Okay, bye. I love you too.